Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heels, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're here in the studio today with our guest, Robert Seek, the owner of Partel Pharmacy, and John Lestello, the managing partner of LifeSci Therapeutics. On Inside Medicine each week, we get together and we talk to leading experts in the area to discuss things that are happening in the great world of healthcare right here in Las Vegas, things that have to involve around medical tourism, medical education, improving the quality of health of those in Southern Nevada, and things people that are doing just amazing things to improve healthcare overall. In today's episode, we're going to talk to a couple gentlemen here about a strategic partnership that's been formed to bring together LifeSci Advantage Program. So if you have questions, please feel free to send those over to us and look forward to uh, seeing this episode broadcast live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our website. So looking forward to hearing from our guests today. Welcome to the studio, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Robert, you and I know a little bit of each other. We're from the same place of the East Coast, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Las Vegas. Well, from a small town just south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I graduated pharmacy school in 95, moved out here because of all the opportunities for pharmacists in 97. So over 20 years now Whoa. in Las Vegas. Where'd you get to, to, to farm school? I went to Duquesne University right, right, right in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. I was right across the river from you. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, good. Great city to go to school in. Been in Las Vegas over 20 years. I uh, actually spent a good portion of my career working in the pharmaceutical industry. Las Vegas was a very yeah. convenient hub. Have a direct southwest flight to anywhere I need to go Absolutely. to get to. Manage 35 clinical trial sites and... Bought a small specialty pharmacy, Partel Pharmacy, 13 years ago, and have been the owner ever since 2005. Yeah, we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about Partel. I, I love everything that you've done with that, and we want to learn a little bit more in a few minutes. But before that, John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from a small town as well, Detroit, yeah. Michigan. <laughs> kind of uh, like Pittsburgh, small. <laughs> there you go. I was raised by a Detroit cop, uh, mm -hmm. to the Marine Corps, combat decorated Marine. Got Thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, undergrad in molecular biology, focused on genetics, did my postgraduate work doing spinal cord transplantation research for stem cells. Uh -huh. Then it's been about 20, 22 years in the pharmaceutical world at like J&J, &J, Pfizer, Merck as a senior. Small principal. companies. Yeah, little ones. <laughs> doing, a, doing a little bit of good impact for the world, right? Yeah. Uh, do it as senior principal investigator. Left there. It did some work uh, in the space of consulting with laboratories to get them in network status with hospitals and CLIA certified for novel assays around precision medicine, looking really at genetics and expression profiles on patients. Wow. This is the stuff that we keep hearing about. Yeah, this is the stuff that we keep trying to get coverage for, right? That yeah, makes a huge absolutely. difference absolutely. in patients' lives. But, you know, we'll keep fighting that fight and we'll come back next week with that solution. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, when we managed to solve some of those problems, we were approached by pharmacies asking if we could look at what had happened with reimbursement as a result of some of the compounding issues over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we successfully built a program that gets great coverage for patients, reduces efforts for physicians, and provides a good source of uh, support to the pharmacies as well. So reimbursements is a huge, huge issue for it Las is. Vegas Heels. Uh, we're taking that square on, and we'll probably have you on for a different uh, show later on to discuss Would just that. Would love to do it. But yeah, in, in the meantime, you also have a master's in molecular biology, genetic engineering, and human disease? Yeah, so I really fell in love with the, the human body. And the strange thing is, is that when I came back from Kuwait, or leaving Kuwait, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the stuff was going on. I remember the Kurds going across the mountains, them getting oh, yeah. biologics. Well, it fascinated me how all that worked. And and so I, when I exited the core and went into college, I started into research and got bit by the bug and haven't looked back. Just love looking at the way the human body genetically involves and so forth. Interesting fact, I exited the Army. I, my last uh, unit was a chemical unit, and they wanted me to get 54 Bravo qualified, and oh. I decided to ETS out at that point. You might want to skip that for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're fellowship trained from A4M? That's right. So there's an organization that actually hosts its international meeting every year here in Las Vegas. We're very close to A4M. We love those folks. Yeah, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. I joined as a fellow in 2005 when I purchased Partel Pharmacy. Uh, I did complete my fellowship, so it's a fellow in metabolic and nutritional medicine. And I've actually served as adjunct faculty in some of their modules to train medical practitioners on some of the things that are very popular in functional medicine for patients. Very 
Very cool. So I, I want to dive in a little bit. Partel, everybody in Las Vegas knows of Partel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you all have been here, I think, 26 years, serving both east and west. You've got operations. Tell us a little bit more about Partel, and you acquired it. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Partel Pharmacy as a whole. Yeah, it was just one small pharmacy in a building, and the building was called the Partel Medical Center. So that became the name of the pharmacy, which the previous owner uh, gave it. It was one small pharmacy, and it was an independent retail pharmacy. And like many independent retail pharmacies, uh, the previous owner decided that, well, there's a lot of practitioner requests for compounded medications. So things that require prescription but aren't commercially available from drug companies and are typically made in a compounding laboratory where you take your active ingredients and you mix them with excipients to make a, a capsule or a cream, a sublingual drop. And that really became an important niche for Partel and led to a lot of growth. So from one small store to now two stores uh, that serve each side of town in in Las Vegas, and we're actually a company that's licensed in 42 states. Oh, wow. Because of the demand for compounded product and the good presence with A4M and those practitioners that are there, it really gives us a lot of reach into other cities just outside of Las Vegas as well. That's a great story. We love seeing uh, Las Vegas groups explode like that. So congratulations on all of your success. John, tell us a little bit about uh, LifeSci Therapeutics. It's it, it's had a continuous evolution with every PBM change that goes on. It's kind of a daily game that we have to play, watching what they're doing, how they're changing things, uh, to block reimbursement in a lot of cases. So what we've done over the years is we partner with pharmacies like Partel, those that don't have OIG, CMS, or DOJ filings. So let's stop there and give us some of those <laughs> acronyms. Our, our, our audience are typically providers, those sure. that are in the healthcare space. Some of those words went a little mm-hmm. over my head, so break that down for us. Uh, they're the ones you never want to get a letter from. So the Office of the Inspector General yep. is Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That's all your federal funded scripts, patient coverage, so forth on those. And then last one, DOJ. They're the ones yes. that send you the letter that says the United States versus, and it's just about how much you're going to pay, not whether or not you actually did something. <laughs> um, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty big two numbers, too. So basically, the, the nuts and bolts of why we started this thing is that a lot of times, historically, and I'll quote my, our, a Pfizer terminology, which is the patient is waiting. So as a research scientist, we took it to heart that there are patients out there who have diseases, often debilitating, where there aren't disease drugs for. So we kept in mind that it was the case. When I exited that, that research and development side of things and went to clinical side, it became more and more evident that while there were medications available for patients, they weren't covered for patients. So not on the panel. Not on the panel, not on the formulary, not something they could get, even though it could increase their quality of life, often cure the disease, definitely you know, make things better for the patient. Well, that became a point of both curiosity and frustration for me. And so we moved to a model within LifeSite Therapeutics of the patient is still waiting, but they have no longer a reason to wait. It's the PBMs that tend to be keeping them waiting and often stop them from getting medications. I understand that's a for-profit organization. It's not necessarily for a healthcare organization. We we get Mm -hmm. that. But that doesn't mean there shouldn't be ways and means for patients who truly need medication to receive it. And that's really where we focus our effort is understanding what mechanisms do the PBMs use to stop patients from getting medications? Not with the intent of necessarily being harmful to the patient, but with the idea that they don't necessarily believe that patient needs the medication, which if we think about it, that's kind of ridiculous since nobody at the PBM evaluating these ideas is a physician who met with and is caring for the patient. Yep. It's a broad stroke block to keep patients from getting medications that would be of value. It's funny, we spent a lot of time here talking about qualities, really just reducing the time from diagnosis to treatment. Mm-hmm. And this is a blockage area. That's right. Because if they're denying that, then this patient's not getting the type of care that they need, and therefore the disease state progresses. And now you're treating it at a later stage, and it costs more. And with possible adverse effects. Because if you think about the idea of maybe this particular medication A was the best solution for the patient in the physician's mindset, they took into consideration the genetics of the patient, the possible adverse effects of the patients, the comorbidities the patient may have. Well, that's not what the PBM does. The PBM says, well, that medicine costs a lot. What's an alternative we could give them? So let's take example, something simple like a topical medication. Topical pain medications, there are no recorded incidents of a GI inc- GI-related GI issue with a topical medication. But a PBM will more than likely cover an NSAID all day long, taken orally, because one, the cost is very low, with complete lack of consideration for the patient's gut, which will have a lot of times adverse events, especially in the elderly patient, ulcers, all kinds of different issues that sure. create more health issues for the patient, not actually alleviating issues, but creating more. So I want to learn more about the LifeSci Advantage. It's a program that you developed. 
Uh, Robert, you're participating in this. Uh, so I want to hear what it does. And then, Robert, why you're embracing this, what it does for your practice, and just learn a little bit more about this. Sure. So let me see if I can break it down in terms of process. So at the pharmacy level, the, one of the bigger pieces that the pharmacy struggles with is getting reimbursement, so coverage of the medication for the patient. Mm-hmm. And that can happen any number of ways. Some of these medications, like, for instance, a uh, diclofenac, there are 189 different NDCs out there. No pharmacy, correct me if I'm wrong, covers 189 of those in their stock. They have a handful of them, which means a lot of times if they don't have the ones that have the lower cost to them, then the margin they would have from the PBM, because the PBM knows what these numbers are too, isn't enough for them to actually fill the script for the patient without taking a loss. So a lot of times what we go in and help pharmacies understand what are the better wholesaling options, where can they get better wholesaling, how can they do decrease inventory, a lot of things just help the mechanics mm-hmm. of the pharmacy. Then there's the part about the physician, and that's really where we kind of make a big difference, is we'll go in and partner up with physicians, we get all the appropriate contracts and all the agreements, so the HIP is covered and all the high tech things are covered, but we will help the physician appraise the patient prior to their arrival what medications are on formulary for that patient based upon their insurance. Now, when the physician sees the patient, they're not guessing what might be covered. They're not having to go back and forth with a pharmacy like Partel and say, well, it's not covered. What would you like us to try now, doc? Because the pharmacy, unless they want to run test claims, which is generally said a big no-no for PBM contracts, they don't know what's on formulary either. So if you write medication A, it's not covered, they have to ask the doc. Literally, doc says, well, what's on formulary? I don't know. You have to give me something. And it just keeps going back and forth. With our program, we're able to go in and we don't run test claims. We don't do like some of these other companies that have gotten in trouble for pinging the insurance of a patient. We do more like a bioinformatic approach, which is really using computer systems and scraping cloud databases and sources of information that feed from PBMs and so forth. And that allows us to fairly accurately, like 98% accuracy, tell what a patient has on formulary. The second part of it is, is a lot of the medications that are out there today require prioritizations. That's been the not necessarily the latest tool, but the volume of PAs has gone through the roof. And, and I don't care what kind of provider you are. In general, there are a list of medications that are life-saving. They prevent limb damage, serious things. And then there's the others that would be good for the patient. These generally fall into the pain group, unfortunately. And docs will literally tell you, look, I've got to run PAs on everything. And really, these aren't life-saving medications. Quality of life enhancing, yes but there aren't enough hours in the day for me to do the life-saving, limb-saving, tissue-saving, and the PA for the pain prior authorization. So we're able to go in and as a partner with the provider, we will actually complete the PA for them up to, but short of actually hitting the submission. As I did not meet the patient, I did not speak with the provider about that patient, we take the information from the EMR and we populate the PA on behalf of the provider. Now, what was a 45 to 90 minute phone call is usually 45 to 90 seconds for the provider. The provider has to be thrilled with that. Uh, So far, it's the biggest thing we get so far is why has no one thought of this? Uh, We've had countless providers on the show and they all talk about how they don't get the opportunity to practice medicine anymore. mm -hmm. They've become this administrative grunt. Uh, just doing this work with EHR, EMR, and and all of this additional work. And it sounds like this breaks down one of those big barriers. It really does. It makes a big difference. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not just a time saver. It's an ability for the physician to actually now get into the idea of relational treatment with the patient rather than know the patient. Yeah. What would that be? You know, getting beyond just why they were there, right? What are the things that resulted in you being here? It's been fantastic. And, we have practices that have gone from having four dedicated people doing nothing but prioritizations down to needing one. That's brilliant. Robert, your side, you're part of this process. You're part of this team. They look upon you to help deliver these pharmaceuticals. What does it do for your practice? How does it improve that? And what does it do really for the delivery of healthcare? Well, from the pharmacy perspective, getting the medication delivered to the patient, that's critical because it's what the practitioner wants, is what the practitioner orders for the patient because there's a need. And that's the ideal medication. Because as John mentioned, there may be alternatives that are less desirable. So if we just look at inexpensive oral NSAIDs for inflammation and pain, those are widely prescribed. But as he briefly mentioned, there are a number of downstream side effects that we know in the medical literature are common. You know, you get gut erosion, you can develop ulcers, and that leads to additional prescribing. So when it comes to using a medication that's more targeted or more specialized, it may not be something that the insurance companies are generally familiar with, but what is covered 
That's a big question for the practitioner and the patient. And the pharmacy does not have the information of the ever-changing formulary, and these things change a lot from the pharmacy insurance companies or the PBMs. We actually at the pharmacy don't know whether or not a product is covered until we receive the prescription. So it's a phone call, a fax, or a patient brings it in, and we actually transmit the claim. So that's the pharmacy computer system adjudicating that with the patient's insurance, and often a rejection will come back, drug not covered. The most frustrating rejections don't give us an alternative that happens to be covered. So there are several manufacturers that might make the exact same generic drug. One of these drugs may be approved from one of the manufacturers, but not the other. And we just don't know that. So with the LifeSci Advantage system, their data management is able to tell the pharmacy, okay, what products are covered, which will allow me at the pharmacy level to anticipate inventory, to make sure that I have the drug in stock that gets covered, that gets to the patient. That's what the practitioner wants. And as far as the prior authorization goes, it's often on the pharmacy as well to handle that administrative aspect. So a pharmacy could choose to take up the workload associated with getting a prior authorization from the insurance company, which is the filling out of a lot of paperwork. And there are some third-party tools that allow us to do that, but, but they, they aren't really that great. Ultimately, it falls on the practitioner. And like John said, the number of medications that would come back with that rejection that our computer screens show, our technicians, prior authorization required, simply leads to a phone call to that doctor's office Doctor, this patient needs a prior ask for this drug. It's another administrative hassle for, and we've actually talked about data, John and I, about the average family practitioner spending over 30% of their time on non-clinical tasks, and the ever-growing list of drugs that require prioritization is actually adding to that administrative burden. So merging this program at the pharmacy level with Partel as a partner with LifeSci Advantage just allows us to get the right medication delivered to the patient more efficiently, and everybody is, is really going to enjoy that. I can't tell you how much this conversation is ringing around in my head. Las Vegas Heal spends a lot of time on reimbursements. And we see a lot of just finger pointing. Yeah. You know, who's to blame for this? And, you know, we sit there and we talk about the BUCAs, the Blue Cross United Signals, Atnos of the World. And is it them? Is it the PBMs? And then everybody goes, well, it's pharma. And pharma's 21% of the spend. And then it's who's on the panel, who's not. This removes a lot of those barriers, gets it down to simplify the process. It seems like it makes sense for the patient, it makes sense for the provider, it makes sense for pharmaceutical. I, this is an amazing program. So talk to us about some of the other issues with the coverage. We talked a little bit about that. Dive in a little bit deeper on that. Sure. So another thing that we see happen, and this is one of the reasons that, uh, to back up a little bit, our program was national originally. What we were brought into was to solve the compound billing issue, replace it with single line NDCs mm -hmm. uh, for a national program. But what ended up happening is that while Express Scripts and Optum and some of the other PBMs, they have their own mail order program, what they've begun doing as early as the beginning of last year is telling pharmacies, like going into Partel and saying, sorry, you can no longer fill if the patient physically lives more than 25 miles away. Which, think about the hypocrisy of that. A PBM will tell you that, oh, you need to use us and you can live anywhere. We'll mail it to you at a cost savings, which, by the way, we see a lot of times isn't true on the cost savings part. Mm -hmm. But they're going to tell Partel that they can't ship more than 25 miles or they can't even deliver more than 25 miles to that patient. So now you've taken a population of patients that this pharmacy could fill and often with a patient assistance program take care of a lot of their financial responsibility or out of pocket, which is another thing that PBMs hate. So they just create these little tools and mechanisms to reduce the number of patients that a pharmacy like Partel can actually work with. And so what we've done is we've gone through, and we do this throughout the country, just happens to be in this area, and we felt the Partel was the best partner for this, is we do basically the program as if it's a local program. It allows us to do the PAs. It allows us to get them the right inventory. It allows us to have the delivery limitations just taken care of. Because most patients in the Las Vegas area are within 25 miles of one of his two pharmacies. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's not so much of an issue. But that's been one of the bigger things they've tried doing is that. The other piece they'll do when you get back into it is they like to keep dropping reimbursement, which for a lot of pharmacies, the mom and pops, they get hurt by that tremendously. Mm -hmm. And largely that's because the wholesalers and the manufacturers have dramatically different price structures. I can go into one pharmacy and let's say I'm talking to Partel and I'm talking to ABC Pharmacy. Partel might have great costs on their wholesale. For the exact same NDCs, I might walk down the street to another mom and pop pharmacy and find out they got tenfold the cost. 
Well, that's not just the PBM. Now we're talking about the manufacturer and wholesalers treating pharmacies differently. I understand the principle of volume and, and demand, all that kind of stuff, and great. But when there's that much of a discrepancy, what we don't like within our company, it's not necessarily our target to fix, but it does help these folks, is I hate watching the independents go under. The big yeah. chain box stores are not the solution, and that's not about my company doesn't work with them, and that's why I don't like No, it's they're not the solution. There's so many reasons they're not. We'd take up a whole other show. I was going to say, I think we got a lot to watch <laughs> when we watch CVS and yeah. Aetna come together. What does and, that uh, and look like? Uh, ESI preparing themselves in a way to be purchased by Optum. I mean, yep. these this isn't a positive thing for patients, which is why, you know, we, we tasked our company with trying to stay on top of that and continuously find solutions for the patients through local pharmacies. That's awesome. I want to dive into a subject matter that's very near and dear to Las Vegas, near and dear to Nevada. It's a priority on the list for Las Vegas Hills, opioids. Yeah. Big subject, big. Give us some of the numbers, the data. We, we had somebody in last week from a behavioral health system and the doctor was sharing some of the data out there and how many people are dying every single day from overdoses. And what does the uh, LifeSci Advantage program do to address that? Well, first off, you're right. It, it is a tragedy what is actually happening each day. Over 115, 120 patients across the U.S. die every day from opioid overdose. Uh, and, and there's so many levels. You know, we listen to President Trump and Congress talk about we're going to do this, we're going to dump more money into these aspects of law enforcement and healthcare to try to resolve that problem. But in, in my less than humble opinion, is it's we're not looking at the right target again. If you go into a PBM and you ask the PBM at a high level, what does it cost for a patient to receive 30 days of an opioid painkiller? Not long acting, just your generic opioid. It's about 130 bucks. For a topical medication that would have no systemic events to it whatsoever, no addiction value to whatever, there's never been an overdose on it, it's about 300 bucks. Where do you think the PBM is allowing those things to get filled? It's it, scary. It, it's ridiculous. and. They have enough money to lobby all day long to keep people from addressing it. I guarantee that if we walked around Las Vegas, you might find one or two people that know that, that the PBMs love the idea of the opioids, take them all day long because the alternative topical that has none of those side effects or potential death issues and aren't contributing to the one trillion we've experienced so far in healthcare related costs since 2001 and the projected 500 billion we're gonna add in the next three years just related to the opioid epidemic. We're not talking about the healthcare people. We're talking about police. We're talking about rescue. We're talking about burial, sir. I mean, all that stuff. That's a trillion and a half dollars going to this epidemic. And we're focused on adding more money to, not wrongfully in this case, but we're looking at adding more money to police for law enforcement and how are we going to handle the healthcare costs. But nobody's looking, as far as I've seen, at the PBM saying, stop blocking the medications that are the alternatives that don't kill people. Wow. Robert, a big component of compounding pharmacy, where what we do is take active pharmaceutical ingredients and make a unique dosage form for patients, had been for, for a nice but short period of time, compounding multi-ingredients into a transdermal prepar preparation. So essentially a cream that would be applied to an area of pain. So if that's osteoarthritis or neuropathy pain. So think about diabetic patients, very stubborn and difficult to treat. That presented an effective alternative. And this is well documented in the medical literature, including the combination products that compounding pharmacies could make. And that's one of the greatest advantages of a compounding pharmacy, where John uses a term saying single NDC. That's one ingredient in one formula, mm -hmm. a multi-drug combination that could attack the pain mechanisms from various ways, reduce inflammation, block transmission at the NAD receptor. Okay, you can actually block the production of something called substance P. So you get the idea that, mm -hmm. that this multi-tiered approach could block the pain perception several ways. And, and these products, uh, a good business to be in if you are an independent pharmacist is the compounding business. So these products were reimbursed well. Uh, the issue was that the PBMs, the pharmacy insurance companies, we predicted in the compounding field that eventually, well, uh, we're reimbursing compounding pharmacies a lot for these. We'll move to what's called a MAC pricing model, maximum allowable cost. There was actually some abuse, and there were some pharmacies that did get letters from some of these three-letter organizations. Uh, Partel Pharmacy did not. However, uh, much to our surprise, the PBMs removed reimbursement for every single compound, so that left a gap. And many practitioners and patients telling us at the pharmacy level, these things worked great. They really did reduce and, in fact, eliminated many patients the need for the opiates. 
And we really like that, the NSAIDs and the opiates. So now with this program, with LifeSci coming back to a few targeted products that, like John said, they have a, they have a, a larger upfront cost but we really believe, both John and I and many practitioners do as well, that to provide these alternatives that are still transdermal, they're topically applied, but they're not compounded anymore. If we can reduce pain and inflammation in these patients and therefore reduce the utilization of oral opiates and NSAIDs, yes, I think we could make a dent in several things. Not only the over 100 patients per day that die from properly prescribed opiates, that we will also reduce the potential for diversion when opiates could be stolen from one particular patient because there's no dose ceiling to the utilization of opiates. So the utilization to basically solve someone's problem of pain uh, could mean increased prescribing. Well, every doctor knows right now that the DEA and the Board of Pharmacy is really tracking the number of opioid dosage units each practitioner prescribes, the number of units that each patient receives. So this is a tough time right now, but it's a good time to have this kind of option available and using the LifeSci Advantage system, being able to stock the inventory, being able to get as many claims as pr approved as possible, just helps us make a dent in that opioid academic, epidemic so that we can hopefully uh, really have a positive impact on the overall health of Las Vegas patients. Wow, and, and one point of clarity, uh, and Robert got it dead on right. There is a larger upfront cost. That's not to the patient, though. Yeah, it's actually the, the the cost for actually having the medications on site for the pharmacy to fill. It is higher. They have a higher carry cost from the wholesalers, which we try to reduce as we can. But to be clear, to make sure we're concretely clear, most of the patients are going to have a lower cost. We can't do much with somebody's opioid copay or whatever. But on topicals. With some of the programs that we have, we can have patients involved in charity programs and 506B programs, all these different types of ways to help them with their copay. And about 90% of the commercial patients won't have an out-of-pocket. Wow. Gents, we've spent a lot of time here. We've covered a lot of ground. I want to touch on two more things, then we've got to bring the episode to a, a close. But for the, our provider base that's out there, that's who Las Vegas Heals represents. Sure. What are the, what's the key benefit uh, to working with the, the LifeSci Advantage program. What is what the, what is that for the provider? So let me tell you how it looks for the provider when they come in. Basically, I'll give you an example. We have a pain group that we look at 1,400 patients on Tuesday morning. We receive a report for them. By Wednesday morning, I have a readout that tells me, and effectively will tell the patient, what medications are on formulary and which of those will require a prior authorization. What ends up happening then is the following Monday, when the patients are going to come in that week, the doctor has a sheet in front of us that says patient's name, what time they're going to be coming in on what day, and then it says what medications are on formulary. The doctor doesn't have Simple. to guess anymore. He doesn't have to wonder or she doesn't have to wonder. It's literally there. And if it has an asterisk next to it or it needs a PA, they can know that we're going to take care of it. 70% of the time, they won't even need to be involved other than that 45-second click I mentioned earlier. That's brilliant. Congratulations on the partnership. Thank you. This is an awesome product. For those folks that want to get in touch with you, talk to you a little sure. bit more, how do they go about getting in, in, in a hold of you? Well, if you? Obviously, if you want to know about Partel, I would talk to Robert. Yeah, we have two locations, and uh, and each one has their own unique phone number. Uh, primarily, uh, when physicians want to call and, and reach me and ask questions about programs like this, they call 702-685-3800. That's our west side or our Summerlin store. Uh, we have a contact form at partelpharmacy.com. On our, on our website, and if there's specific questions about this program, there'll be myself, uh, we have a sales liaison that, that's actually working to deploy this program with the LifeSci Advantage right now, and if there's more specific questions that actually get into the minutia of this prior auth detail, we can easily get that to John, or? Sure. Perfect. Sure, if you need to contact me directly, you can do so at 636-578-6573. Best way is to text me first, because I'm usually in meeting somewhere. Very good. Yeah, alternatively, while it's under construction by the end of this week, uh, the revamped website should be back up. We'll actually hope to have the video up on there at lifesideglobal.com. Perfect. Gents, thanks for coming into the studio. Amazing learning opportunity for all of us here today. We appreciate you participating and being part of Inside Medicine. For our viewers out there, we look forward to seeing you next week, and you make it a great day.